Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to part two of the local storage series. In this part, we're gonna show you how to create this basic application. As you can see, I already added some items to my to-do app. And even if I click on the refresh button, they remain on the screen. Let's actually close it and open it again. And as you can see, the items are still on the screen. We didn't focus on creating the best looking app. We just wanted to show you how local storage works. So hopefully you can take what you learned here and apply it to your own applications. All right, before we begin, I recommend watching part one of the series because I'm gonna go over some things in the JavaScript portion of the application that I covered in that video. So if you didn't watch that video, you might be a little bit confused in this one. All right, let's knock this out. Let's create a container. And let's create another one within this one. We're gonna give this a name of to do app. Let's give it a title to do app. Let's create a space and let's create a label for our input box. Let's add item in here and in here as well. All right, let's create a space and let's create our input box. We don't need the name here. Let's give this an ID of item. All right, let's create two more spaces. And now we're gonna create two buttons. So this is gonna be the add button. This is gonna add items to our to-do app. So let's use an on click here. We're gonna call on a function named add when the user clicks that button. And this is gonna be the delete button. We're gonna keep it short with DEL. Let's also use an on click for this one. This one is gonna call on the delete function or DEL for short. All right, and underneath that div, we're gonna create a UL element. This is where the items from our to-do app are gonna go. And that's gonna be it for the HTML. For the CSS, let's change the background color. I'm gonna go with light salmon. Let's change the width of the container to 95%. And let's turn it into a flex box. Let's place the container in the center and in the middle. We're also gonna use flex direction column. All right, for the to-do app container, let's change the width to 300 pixels. Let's give it a padding of zero on the top, 20 on the right, 20 on the bottom, and 20 on the left. Let's give it a border radius of five pixels. Let's change the background color, white smoke. I'm gonna give it a border of one pixel, solid light gray. For the input box, let's also change the width to 95%, padding five pixels, border radius five pixels, and let's also give it a border of light gray. For the button, let's change the width to fit content. Let's give it a padding of five pixels. Let's use cursor pointer. Let's give it a border, one pixel solid, light gray. And let's also give it a border radius of five pixels 
and let's change the background color to white smoke all right let's give the button a hover effect let's go with black let's hover this and we're going to go with the rgba value of 0 0.1 And for the LI element, this is where the items of our to-do list are going to go. We're going to change the font size to 1.5 RAM. All right, that's it for the CSS. All right, for the JavaScript, we're going to start by getting access to this UL element. Once again, this is where the items of our to-do app are going to go. We're going to get access to that by using Query Selector. Let's also get access to the input box. We gave that one an ID of item. All right, now we're going to create an array where we're going to store all of the items from our to-do list. For this one, we have to check if we're already using local storage. If we are, then we're going to initialize this array with the data that we have in our local storage. If we're not using local storage, then we're going to create a new array. To check if we're already using local storage, we're going to use the get item function and we're going to pass it the key that we're using for this particular local storage. In this case, we're going to call it items. All right, let's use the ternary operator. So if we are using local storage, we're going to of course, initialize this items array with the data from the storage. Otherwise, we're just going to create a new array. All right, now we have to place the data within our items array on the screen. For that, we're going to use the built-in function for each, and we're going to include the name Lee Maker. So that's actually a function. We need to create that here. The way this built-in for each function works is pretty unique. It takes an array and it loops through it. It lets us include the name of the function here, which we're going to create here. This text is the data of each of the indexes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a Lee element. And we're going to set the text content of that Lee element equal to text. And then we're going to place that Lee element that we just created inside of the UL element that we created in our HTML file. So now every time that we run this application, this code is going to run. And if we have anything inside of our local storage, it's going to place it on the window. All right, now let's create the function that gets called when we click on the add button. Here we're going to add the user input to our items array using the push function. Now we're going to add the array to local storage using set item. Let's give it a key of items. And we're going to add the name of our array here. We also want to call on the Lee Maker function so we can display this particular item on the screen. And let's not forget to clear the input field by setting it equal to an empty string. All right, so now when we add something in here, it displays here. All right, now let's create the delete function. We're going to use the clear function to clear the contents from our local storage. And we're also going to set the inner HTML of the UL element to an empty string. This is going to delete the contents from within it. And last but not least, we're going to set the items array back to an empty array. All right, and now when we click on this, that gets deleted. 
All right, let's add that again. And let's add one more thing. Now, when we refresh this, this remains on the screen. And even if we exit and run it again, it's still here. And just to let you know, this wasn't working for me initially. And that's because there's settings that you have in your browser that are probably preventing it from showing up when you close the browser and open it back up. So what I did was I went over to settings, privacy and security, and then click on cookies and other site data. And then you want to unselect this one here, the clear cookies and site data when you quit Chrome. So instead of selecting it, have it unselected. That's what I did and it started working for me. If you're using a different browser, I left instructions in the description that shows you how to deactivate this depending on which browser you have. So hopefully that works for you. And that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys learned a trick or two about local storage. And I hope you guys take what you learned here and use it with your own applications. I might even do a part three just to show you how you can use this to create a more complex application. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one.